Yeah, that fall if it looks kind of dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special formula. What is this cap? <laughs> This is like the second take right here. We already pretty much started, but everything we got here. Okay, he okay. got this, okay. which is just okay. Do it, do it. All right, so so this is the ogle pogo roll. It's basically deep fried eel, fish roe on top, avocado, and then fish inside. I think it's tuna. I actually forget. Anyway, this is delicious. This is California roll, nothing too fancy. Miso soup mm -hmm. and some edamame. Philadelphia roll there. If that's California, then that means this is ebby ebby, and this is spicy tuna. So. That's all I got. I didn't get anything extra. I went on Instagram and I told you guys to ask us questions. I was expecting a lot of science-based questions, but I wasn't expecting this many science-based <laughs> questions. <laughs> you guys are turning this into a job for him. He's got to reach in his research bag to make sure he's back with the stuff he's saying. Or you probably scoot off camera a second. Yeah, to check the paper. we got a couple of Oh, whoa. Yeah. yeah, we got a lot. We got a lot Holy crap. Yeah, it's, it's, going, it's going through. And we got guys DMing me solo so that they can kind of slide their way in. Oh, okay. well, let's kick it off with a question. All right, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna kick it off with a question. I think this question is good because it's coming from Patty Lift. Shout out Patty <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shout out Patty Lift. He actually asked us a couple questions. If you saw me on Tinder, which way would you swipe? This is, this is how old I am. I literally don't know that when you Swipe. I literally don't okay, know yeah. what direction. So pretty much if you swipe right, you like the person and you get to contact them and like mm -hmm. message them. If you swipe left, then um then it's a no, like you don't want to speak right. to them, right? right? So Patty said like which way would you swipe <laughs> for him? I'll keep looking, see what else is there. Maybe they'll come maybe they'll come back, you know what I mean? Jeff said he'll I'll keep just, swiping. Like, I don't know if that's enough. <laughs> yeah, he said he'll keep swiping, so you get a no from him. Swipe yes, so we can have some good If he's shredded, bro, I'm I might I might think about it for a little while. It's just a second longer. Like, depending on what kind it's of- It's a pretty good are. pick, so I might have to swipe. Would you rather lose the ability to read or speak? Hmm. That's actually oh, a good question. that's a really good question. Um, I'd probably selfishly rather lose the ability to speak. You know, from my perspective, I'd rather be able to still learn. So, yeah. Yeah. I, if, if I couldn't, yeah, if I could never read, that would be, oof, that'd be bad. Think. But if it's just words and I could take in like audio and stuff, mm -hmm. then I'd probably rather lose the ability to read because then I could still speak and I could just like listen to stuff. Like even something as simple as reading somebody at the grocery store, mm -hmm. like that would be such an inconvenience. True, true. Or like reading signs on the highway, true, like there's true, a lot true. of like fine lines there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But not being able to communicate with people would be like that would be crazy. I feel but like be kind of that like, could be in some cases. <laughs> like, I could have got me out of this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You always got an excuse if you can't talk. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I can't come out tonight. Like I can't talk. I literally, like I can't even give you an excuse because I, I can't, can't even tell you. I'm gonna go not being able to talk because sign language is fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I said, there's so many things in the world throughout the day that you read. I think it would be like too hard not to have that. So shorten that up. That's my answer there. All right, let's flip it Flip it to a science question. What do you think about training while sick? I feel like that won't take oh. us too long to go on. I, I, I actually, I, I did a video on that. I think it was before you came on. What I do is, first of all, check out the video, but if you're in that gray zone where you're like pretty sick, but you're not like debilitatingly sick, where it's like obvious you can't go to the gym. Yeah. If you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I should go. Yeah. What I do is I go and do 10 minutes of light cardio in the gym. Mm -hmm. So then if I start to feel better as I work through the cardio, then I don't have an excuse. You know what I mean? It's okay. like, I actually, I'm not just using laziness as an excuse not to go to the gym. Right. So I'll go do a bit of cardio. Then if I, after 10 minutes of cardio, mm -hmm. if I still feel too sick to lift, mm -hmm. then I'll pack it up and go back home. But if I feel good, then I'll hit, hit the workout. So that's kind of like the test I use to keep myself accountable. That's the short answer. There's a long answer on my channel. I feel like he should answer all the questions first so that my answers don't sound bad. <laughs> <laughs> my personal general rule for me, like, I mean, I don't know if this works for anyone else. I always said if it was like, what is it, like below the head or above the head? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm, that. What, mm -hmm. what is the rule? Is it below the head? If it's above the neck area, yeah. then it's probably okay. But if it's below and you have like stomach issues and yeah. all that kind of stuff, that's it's probably good to leave it. Right, yeah. So like if I'm just sneezing mm -hmm. or coughing, mm -hmm. I'll probably still go to the gym. I don't care about getting everybody else sick. Mm -hmm. I gotta be honest. I mean, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get these gangs, baby. <laughs> he probably has a more science-based video on that. And we're gonna plug that video. But bam. Bam. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold up. <laughs> Shut up, PE man. Fitness science and then go something else. Okay, fit. yeah, yeah. Someone said, who's the better dancer between us? Oh my God, for sure you. 
I don't know. Come on. My dancing is like, the extent of my dancing is like transitions between bodybuilding poses. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, totally we go out that. after this? Like, 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 it's like just still. like side tricep <laughs> into the Arnold pose. <laughs> I actually used to be like a dancer in a dance crew. I think I have to Yeah, take I that think one. you have to yeah, take that one. one. I think this would be good to hear from his perspective and good from my perspective, but thoughts on reverse diet? Yeah, that's a good question. So I think that reverse dieting was really popular like four or five years ago and everyone thought you had to do it or basically you were just gonna screw yourself over for the next show. Mm -hmm. And then everyone started wondering like, why are people still super shredded and they're like three months post competition still starving? And there was really like no real point to it other than just to stay lean mm -hmm. for, for no reason. So like mm -hmm. it became almost like a contest of who could get their calories the highest while still staying shredded, I swear. Oh. Like people were like, bro, I'm eating yeah, like 3,000 yeah. calories, but I still feel like shit and I'm still got strided glutes, but at least I'm eating more food. And it was yeah. like, are you really winning at that point? But it's almost the side effects that's the worst part. Yeah, Like exactly. the side effects for me are worse than like the low food. Yeah, exactly. So you'd still, so, so if you stay lean, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if your calories get really high. Cause you'll you still, still have most of those same side effects just because your body fat percentage so is so low. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I did a debate with a bunch of smart guys like three years ago. I think most people came away from that thinking that the best approach is to have some kind of recovery diet yeah. where your goal is to, excuse me, your goal is to gain weight at a rate that feels comfortable to you. Mm -hmm. So like the goal should be to settle back into some kind of comfortable range yeah. where you're recovering well, you're putting on size, your, your strength is recovering at a reasonable rate, but yet you don't rebound to the point that now you just start to feel lethargic and your body image is worse and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I think it's about finding that middle ground. Yeah. Where reverse dieting can apply, I think, is for someone, say like myself, who m you might run a cut for a show mm -hmm. and get pretty lean. Yeah. Now, if you don't have all those bad side effects, right. you could reverse yourself out of that. And right, easy. and it might be beneficial. Because you're not suffering from those exactly. effects, right? You're not trying to get out of it as bad. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So it depends on how lean you get. If you yeah. get really shredded for a competition, <laughs> it's funny because that's when most people are like, oh, I need to reverse diet. Mm -hmm. I actually think that's the least applicable time for a reverse diet. Mm -hmm. I would say it's if you're if you're getting to like beach lean. Okay, if you want to maintain that now, a reverse diet makes perfect sense. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? See, yeah, I think that's a good point. My perspective, because I just finished a show three weeks ago, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I was like suffering hard from side effects, right? Mm -hmm. So the last thing on my mind, well, for, first of all, suffering hard from side effects and suffering from just like super low calories. Like mm -hmm. I got down to like a thousand calories or something like that. It was nuts. So like the last thing I was thinking about was reverse dieting. And I do think that you should reverse diet. Like you said, I feel like there's that middle ground. Mm -hmm. It's easier said than done, man. Mm -hmm. Person asking this question, it depends. Are you coming off a show mm -hmm. or exactly. are you coming off like a beach lane diet? Yeah, exactly. If you're coming off a beach lane diet, yeah, I say reverse diet. If you're coming mm -hmm. off a show, mm -hmm. I can't tell you after starving for 20 weeks mm -hmm. to say, okay, let's increase the calories by 100. Cause yeah. like mentally when you're done, you're like, you're done. Mm -hmm. It kind of depends too, cause like I've done six shows yeah. and I've had kind of different approaches for all of them. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, like I've kind of found that regardless of what I do, yeah. for me personally, mm -hmm. I end up getting to a spot where I'm like slightly overshooting. Mm -hmm. So like I'm a little bit fatter than I was probably before I even started. Mm -hmm. But then my body naturally settles back in as my hunger restores, my hormones restore and that kind of thing. I don't just keep going on forever. So a big part of this, in my opinion, depends on how fat are you comfortable getting? <laughs> you know what I mean? True. Because like, unless you have a predisposition for obesity or you can't keep yourself, you know, from just letting that escalate forever, which I don't think most people would. I think it really depends on your, your psychology as yeah. much as anything else. So it's, it's a type of question that's super individual yeah. and you could have anything from yes, reverse dieting makes perfect sense for you. You should do it slowly and gradually. So you maintain your level of leanness to, I think you should be more aggressive with your recovery and put on weight faster and accept that and then get back to a point where your body is healthy again. Yeah. So it, it really depends on the goal, the person, the circumstance, whatever. But I'm, I would never be like the type of person who's like, you gotta reverse diet or you're gonna, you know, rebound and you're gonna mess yeah. your metabolism up and all this sort of stuff. I think, I think it's overrated. Is yeah. what I, would say. I, I had that thought process after I went ham for a week. And then mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna ruin everything. Exactly. So post show is a difficult time regardless. Yeah. And I think the key is just to like, get through that tough phase mm -hmm. until you get to a point where you're like, okay, my body, body's, excuse me, my body's starting to settle down, mm -hmm. getting back to homeostasis, now I'm ready to just like start making gains and kind of put that 
behind me for now. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It's a good I question was, for you because yeah. it's perfectly relevant. And I, actually, like, I'm gonna say, I don't want this to get too, too long because I'm gonna mm -hmm. spend 15 minutes on one question, but I'm actually gonna do a video about that um, in the future here. I know I talked a little bit about it in my post-show update video. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that because I did go through some things mentally post-show where I was like, kind yeah, of like, do a video on that. yeah, in that middle phase of like, yo, should I bulk or should I cut? Because I gained too much weight after my show. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's kind of hard, so. Bro. Okay. Hey. Awesome. You want some prolific? Yeah, I'll take some prolific. <laughs> Damn, my prolific looks kind of dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special formula. Damn. Yeah. Oh, man. What is this cat? <laughs> prolific, brother. This is cat. <laughs> Enjoy. All right. My seat. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'll do a shot. I'll do, I'll do some prolific. That's the key you want? I'll do a shot. Yeah, bro. You changed the color. <laughs> it's like some yak. <laughs> oh. It's so funny because like I always tell Rashawn when I have a video topic idea. Yeah. And like his reactions are hilarious because sometimes he'll be like, oh that's a good idea. And he'll be like, bro, you're not making that video. <laughs> I'm gonna go on record and say this because I've told this to him. You're private. pretty good too. Like you you're pretty good at anticipating the response of my audience. Yeah. Cause I feel like you kinda fall into that that kind of stereo prototype yeah. you know yeah let's just say the last video was benching with your feet up <laughs> and when he came to me and said that i was like nah no. i was like nah bro we're not doing that that was exactly in the comment section if you guys go to the comment section right now it's just trolling so that, i was right on that all right anyway next question danny Oh. Shout out Danny. Danny, up, you already know Danny's gonna give us something music related. This is the type of stuff that I wanted too. Like, okay. I want the fitness, but I want this. Top five rappers. Oh currently. boy. We know currently. Currently. Oh, current. Yeah, current. For both. Ah. For both of us individually. Do you want to start with this one? Me? Yeah. I, I can, I mean. Yeah, we got podcasts. I'm ready to go. Shout out to the podcast. <laughs> I'm ready to go too. <laughs> Top five rapper is Jay Z. He's still relevant to me. Um, I thought his last album was amazing. I think all his albums are amazing. I know it's going to sound crazy. I think The Baby right now is one of my favorite rappers. Like, I listen That's to right. The Baby really regular. And I'm not saying top five rappers of all time. Mm -hmm. So let's, not, let's get that this like straight. 2019. This is like right now, who do I listen to? Top five rappers. So, Jay Z, The Baby. I'm going to have to say Meek Mill. Like, I'm a huge Meek Mill right. fan. You know, I've always been a Meek Mill yeah. fan since like middle school. I think he's my fourth. I'm gonna have to say Nipsey. Mm. Rest in peace, Nipsey. I'm not like a hype beast. Like I was on Nipsey Hustle before. We were talking about him before, before, before he died. And I remember the day he died, I texted yeah. you and you were like, bro, I'm heartbroken. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. I was like, at the gym like, at the time. Yeah. I was like shed a tear. I actually cried. I, I can't lie, I cried. Um, but yeah, I've been a Nipsey fan for like maybe two years now. Every interview he has, I watch, so you mm. know. Nipsey's definitely up there. And then, I'm gonna have to say Drake, man. A lot of people mm. don't wanna give Drake his credit because he's like the obvious answer, but like he's obvious answer for a reason. So I'm gonna say Drake. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with my, my, hmm. my answer. That's legit. Yeah, yeah. This is tough for me because my answer would be different if I was like, who are the best skill-wise versus mm -hmm. who is that my just favorite. Yeah, just say you know who I mean? you listen to, like who you actually like who I to. would, who would be my top? So like, number one would still be Kanye for me. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like he, he hasn't missed yet, and he's still relevant. Like, as soon as he drops his next project, everyone's gonna be talking about it. I would put Travis Scott there just cause like, I'm constantly cycling through his his albums when when I'm training. And I'm not new on Travis since like Kylie Jenner, you know this. Yeah, like, I've been oh, listening to him for like Oh, this is like one of the years. only guys who I know who's like, Travis is my favorite artist. Uh, I don't know anyone else who's like that die hard for Travis. He's like, this is, he's legit. Mm -hmm. I've seen him live too in his live shows. Yeah. Like I, once, I feel like once you've seen him live, mm -hmm. you will respect him more as a performer. Right. It's so crazy. And he's such a perfectionist too, I think, with his sound. Like, and he's a producer as well. So just super talented. That's kind of why I like both him and Kanye. See, I like a lot of the like, new wave like mumble stuff too so mm -hmm. i really like future i feel like future's last project was really good and oh, yeah. he's got such a good like stack of records yeah. so i'll probably put future in there but i could like i could replace him with like young thug as yeah. well but i'd probably put future over thug for me Shit. and then that's actually really oh uh, damn i don't know actually just I feel like you're a bigger young thug fan for sure like for sure <sighs> Oh, I, I would put Brockhampton in there. Okay. okay, okay, let's go. Let's go Brockhampton in there. I think that as a group, they're a bit worse since Amir got kicked out or he left. Mm -hmm. But I still think 
I still think they're really creative and doing something different in hip hop that I like. I'm gonna. Put, this is such a random list. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, risk, the list is random. So guys, remember this is. You're, not so, you're so much more respectful on yeah. camera. If I like half the time when we're like, it's just me and you. Yeah. You're like, bro, young thug. <laughs> Who listens to young thug? <laughs> I want to respect your list so you can get it out. Okay, hold on. Because if I start going back and forth, with yeah, you, yeah, I'll start. I know we'll be like back and forth all day. I've been listening to Playboy Cardi like nonstop mm. lately. Like he's got such a unique sound for mm -hmm. me. So okay, screw it. Let's put Playboy Cardi in the list. That's huge. And Top five then, Playboy Cardi? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. It's all subjective. He, he didn't say what I thought was who I thought were the best. He yeah, just he said, said what, top five. What I think, what, what I think is good. Even though I didn't like his last project. I, I'm gonna put Earl Sweatshirt in there. I gotta put Earl Sweatshirt in there. I did not like his last project, no but he's so good. He's so good that he's gotta be in my top five. He's just so talented, man. Like, I honestly think Earl can wrap circles so around half good. the rap game. I know, I know, I know Earl can wrap circles. <laughs> okay, Kanye West, Travis Scott, yeah. Kendrick Lamar, Brockhampton, and Joey Badass. That's fair. Damn, you Honorable listen. mention Earl Sweatshirt. Okay, so it's, kind of, it's so all over the place. Yeah, like, it's so all over like the place. I said, this list is so like, these are people <laughs> we like, these people who are current. Like, you you start talking about top five, actual top five, it's a little different. That's a podcast. That's a list. long answer. Yeah, man. absolutely. Once you start going into like skill wise, yeah. now it's now we got a debate on our hands. Yeah, yeah that's a long one, but that's really mm -hmm. my top five. That's just top mm -hmm. five. All right, we're gonna move on back to a science question. I know you guys are itching mm -hmm. for a science question. I know you're itching. <laughs> All my subscribers just dislike the video. Yeah, like, where's the science? <laughs> Fuck, man. Most more prolific. How am I gonna get home? <laughs> oh, okay, fair, fair, fair. <laughs> Just a quick question. Someone asked, what position did you play when you play volleyball? Hmm. I played setter. Setter? Yeah, that's your answer. I mean, yeah, this might be simple for you, but can you gain muscle and strength by just eating out of maintenance and at around 15% body fat? 15% body, right. body fat. Yeah, body fat. Yeah, that maintenance. Of course, yeah. You can, you, this, nothing is black and white. And, Nothing is mutually exclusive. So you can gain muscle in a caloric deficit. Yeah. It's just harder. Yeah. And it depends on your body fat percentage and your level of advancement. But of course you can. You can build muscle at maintenance in a while. Yeah. I'm coming out with an ebook on this like, in a couple weeks, bro. Make sure you guys go pick up that. This is, a, this is a good video for me. Yes, <laughs> yes sir. <laughs> when will we see Jeff compete again? Mm. That's a good one. I feel like it's a good one. I'm not That's a fair question. Yeah. I'm not sure to be honest, man. Like, as you know, like everything with the channel is so time consuming for me and it's just like yeah. where most of my attention is and where most of my goals are right now. Mm -hmm. So the thing about competing is you don't want to compete until you really have that itch. Like you've got to really be motivated intrinsically to want to get up there. And right now, I don't think I have that intrinsic motivation. So I don't know. It could be 2020, it could be 2021, 2022. Mm -hmm. I'm really not sure. The main priority for me now is getting my strength levels back to where they were when I was at more or less a peak, yeah. and that isn't congruent, congruent with doing a prep, so yeah. it's a little bit down the road for me right now. It's a so, lot, man. Yeah. Prepping is a lot. Yeah. Like, prepping puts a lot of it's, things on hold. Yeah, it's not something you can take lightly, and like, my channel and, you know, what, everything that we're building is kind of the, the top priority for me right now. I'm gonna answer this real quick, quick. For a skinny guy with a small appetite, how do I bulk while still eating clean? I feel like this question is kind of going down different avenues. For a skinny guy with a small appetite, okay, that's kind of one question itself. If yeah. you're skinny with a small appetite and you're trying to bulk, the simple solution is you gotta eat more. Like I used to be super, super skinny in high school with a small appetite, so I was like underweight, I was playing ball, a lot of cardio. You just gotta eat more, bro. Like you gotta do mass gainers. You have to be in a surplus to gain weight. Like if you're eating in a deficit or at maintenance, you're not gonna gain weight. It's just not, that's, that's not the way your body works. So I would say start adding in a mass gainer because you can find mass gainers that'll give you an extra 1500 calories a day. And that's a huge boost in your day. While eating clean, I mean, that's kind of up to you. Like I personally think eating 3500 calories worth of clean food is gonna fill you up a lot more than eating 3500 worth of like dirtier food. Like if I ate, three burgers right now, I would probably be close to that 2,500 calories or something like that. Whereas if I ate a thousand calories worth of salad, bro, mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta be pretty full. Mm -hmm. You already got a small appetite. So I think half and half is good. Like get your nutrients in, get your micronutrients in, but try and incorporate some things that will get you in a caloric surplus for the day. Mm -hmm. That would be my advice. At the end of the day, if you're a skinny guy, yeah. you're active, you're exercising, 
presumably young, yep. healthy. Eating a bit of junk food is not gonna kill you, right? And it's gonna help you put on muscle. So I think the key is to open yourself up to eating junk food. Don't be scared to eat junk food. It's not gonna kill you. And put on some mass that way. Obviously not 100% junk food, right? Have a little bit of balance, you know? Still try to yeah, get some, sure. something. Just open your, but he said, while eating clean. Yeah, you can't. Like, you don't need to, bro. You don't need to eat clean. It's gonna make your life way harder and Damn, you may not get to your goals. Yeah. yeah. So. Everybody can't afford to eat 4,000 calories clean. Like mm -hmm. that's expensive, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, so yeah, take that advice. Pop tarts. Yeah, man, don't, don't, don't overthink it, man. Just eat more. That's like the simple answer. Don't overthink it. For a relative beginner nine months training, what is the most important thing for lifting besides consistency? My answer is pretty simple on this. I'm gonna say technique. You know, most people don't start out with perfect technique to begin with. Right. And so you're still kind of ingraining those habits. So I don't think it changes much. Even as you get more advanced, I still find technique to be pretty far at the forefront, apart from like, you know, consistency and mm -hmm. all, all the intangibles. Mm -hmm. um, that's gonna be my simple answer now. I'm gonna say get on a good workout plan. Find a good program. Yeah. Uh, my boy got a. He's got a, oh, yeah. you know, I'm gonna plug his programs. He's got a couple programs that you can check out: beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So, but like, I feel like I got a lot of friends who might get into the gym, and I find that they're doing like the worst split. There's just no back reason for the split that they're doing. Finding a good split or finding a good program from the beginning can set you up for like success, like mm -hmm. right from the beginning. Because if you got consistency, you have the diet, and you start out with a good program, like yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong. These questions kind of imply that there's like one thing, there's a couple things that this question implies, mm -hmm. right? That there's like one thing that matters way more than the rest of it, which isn't really true. Right. Like you need to work hard, yeah. you need to have enough volume, you need to have good technique, you need to have, like you said, a good split, you need to have a program you can follow through on so it has to be fun, yep. you need to be working in a reasonable rep range, you need to be doing movements that are safe. Like there's actually a lot. enough that's why I said that question. you can't condense it down to one thing. Right. So it, no matter what answer you give, it's gonna be like, yeah, but you could have said this, you could have said this, because yeah. there is no one thing, right? Um, despite what like a lot of popular channels will tell you, right? Yeah. The other thing is it assumes there's like a big difference between like what a beginner should do, what an intermediate should do, and what an advanced should do. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is differences, but I think it almost just scales up. Like it's like, it's not like technique really matters for a beginner, but then when you become advanced, it doesn't yeah. matter anymore. It's like, yeah. no, it matters even more, but now you've got to find different tweaks and cues, like altering your grip position and or volume, what kind volume. of mind muscle connection cues can you use and that kind of thing. Yeah. And you know, volume can scale up, but then there comes a point where more volume yeah. isn't better and then your recovery factors in, it's but, lot, yeah. but still the things that matter the most for all these three things, mm -hmm matter the most for all three things. True, and they're true. not discrete. It's not like once you get an intermediate, now you gotta switch everything up and do yeah, everything yeah, all different. Yeah. It's like the same principles apply, right? Yeah. And, and that's all the stuff we you know, covered in, in the fundamental series. It applies across the board. Across the board. Inside, <laughs> across the board. Everywhere. Like, just watch my videos. Like, why are you I mean, not... <laughs> I wish I would have had these questions like going oh. a little bit earlier. Because yeah. they're like rolling, There's rolling. Lot, yeah, they're really rolling. Do you want to do one more just in case? Or do you think we're good? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, it's kind of fun. It is fun. We'll do one more question. <laughs> I know I just said that. We'll do one more question. Because I have like guys. I yeah, have that's crazy. So many questions. And then I got DM questions too. So I'm like. I feel bad doing this video and not doing yeah. like a lot because yeah. it's like I know you guys put that. If it's a long out. video, it's fine. You can yeah. just put timestamps, right? Is it true? Watch the whole video though. <laughs> 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 all, right, all right, we got one here. What about your opinion on DUP training? Okay, this is a can of worms. So I think a lot of people don't really understand what DUP is. Yeah. So DUP is way simpler than yeah. people make it out to be. So it stands for daily undulating periodization. Basically, all that means is you have a week of training, so you have seven days. It just means that variables undulate throughout the week. They undulate daily. Undulation just means they're wavy, so they go up and down. They're not exactly the same. A program that isn't undulated would be basically three sets of eight, three sets of eight, three sets of eight. It's the same thing yeah. every day, right? So you have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three sets of eight. An undulating, daily undulating periodized program would do three sets of six, three sets of eight, three sets of 12, or even three sets of three or something. Yeah. It, it just varies, mm -hmm. right? So I think daily undulating periodization is smart. Yeah. Because for one thing, you're gonna have less of like the same old, same old training day after day after day. It's a little bit less 
monotonous. Yeah. And there's a nice bit of research backing it up in terms of strength. Mm -hmm. In terms of hypertrophy, I don't know if we necessarily have that, but like almost every program that you can run has some element of, of DUP, DUP belt yeah. in. That's so, what I've so what I've found is like, People use DUP almost as, as like a, a buzzword or like yeah. a, almost like a, a clickbait word. Yeah. And it doesn't really mean that much in that context. Like in the research, it's used to compare just straight linear non-periodized programs to daily undulating periodization or daily undulating periodized programs. And they tend to come out on top when it comes to strength. Mm -hmm. So like, yes, varying your rep ranges is a good idea and you can do that within the week. You can do that from week to week. You can build it up from week to week. Um, but yeah, I think that as a whole, the, pro the methodology is a little bit blown out of proportion, yeah. misapplied and whatever. Um, but as a concept, yeah, it makes sense. But at the most fundamental level, it's actually pretty simple. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, that's, that's what I have to say. I don't think I really need to elaborate more yeah. on that. I feel yeah. like you covered that a lot. I, my personal opinion on that was I think a lot of people use it as like a buzzword mm -hmm. to sell their program. I mean, no shots at anyone. A lot of good programs will have DUP, mm -hmm. you know, and they're not going to call it DUP, mm -hmm. you know, it's just kind of given. So that's the last one. Okay. You know, I feel like we Let's could wrap. go on for days. <laughs> we got questions. I mean, if you guys want us to do this again, we're together a lot. I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to do this every video, but we can do it again sometimes. So the video gets a lot of likes. We got to do another one. And I will answer a lot more questions in that one. But you guys already know, if you're new, join the crew. Subscribe to the channel. Leave this video a like before you leave. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next video.